Hosea is written after the first captivity of Israel north by the Assyrians, 2 Kings 15.29. So we jump back into history a little further. Our eyes are off Judah and on the northern ten tribes. Chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea. Okay, so this is the inspiration. Um, God is speaking to this man. It's inspiration of God to this man, the son of Berari. Of all the Hoseas you find in the Bible, it stands this man out to who his dad is. Because there's other Hosea. Hosea is to save. Joshua would be Jehovah saved. You put a J-E -E in front of Hosea, you would have Jehovah saved. You would have Jesus. But God's name is dropped. It's just to save. And we'll see why in this book. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, <clears throat> And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. So this book is dated, if you're to lay out the kings, of the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel. <clears throat> this is just before they go into captivity. It begins the word of the Lord by Hosea. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord said to Hosea, go. That's a proper expression from God. Tells you to go. Take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. Well, how is that for a commission of God? Hosea, you a man of God? Yes, I am, Lord. You obey the law? Yes, I do, Lord. You do right? Yes, I do, Lord. I want you to go get a wife that's a whore. How many prophets in the Bible do you know of, like, uh, scratching their head? You want me to do what, Lord? And yet God is using this as an illustration. Illustrations are one of the best, if not the bestest, ways to help your outline, your sermon, your, your teaching, is to help them to see clearly. And Jesus uses illustrations all the time. A sower went out and sowed seed. A man went out fishing. A man built a house. Another one built a house on the sand. There was a king that said, hey, you know what? I want to go to battle. Illustrations are a perfect way of helping you to show the Bible. And here, it's a true illustration. It's not just a story. He tells Hosea, go, go marry a whore. Some of your Baptist preachers would, would rip Hosea out of the Bible. Well, you can't do that. Rip him out. Can't use him. Well, what do you do when God says go marry one? Now, I'm not saying God's going to tell you that to do that today, but look what he tells his man of God. And children of whoredom. So not just a whoredom, but just actively involved in whoredom. Ooh, that's a big nasty word. A prostitute. No, you're a whore. That's a perfect word. For the land has committed great whoredom. Now, really, the land, the mountains, the hills, the rivers, it's the people. And we're going to see who these people are. I'll tell you right now, it's Israel before Judah. The land of northern Israel are involved in whoredom. Look at the kings. Look at the queens. Jezebel. You know, you can find in Judah good kings that did right. In Israel, you cannot find one king. I don't know how many there are. I'm not counting them. But all the kings listed in Israel, you can't find one king that did right from Jeroboam. At all. 
Not one. They only got worse and worse and worse do they go into captivity. Departing from the Lord. Now this is the condition that they go before in the captivity of Assyria. <coughs> and look how much we've studied Judah recently. And what Judah's condition was. And uh, we read in Ezekiel about Aholibah. And I forget what the other one is. But the story of Samaria and Jerusalem, how they were liking in their sins, that J Judah had never took, took a lesson from Israel in their sins. They just continue worse and worse. So God had to put them in captivity, just like their sister, Samaria. Now, what Judah should learn from Hosea is we need to repent and get right. And Hosea tells us the sinful condition and Ezekiel and Jeremiah tells us for Judah, you know what you need to do as a Christian? You need to look at that person's life and say, you know what? I need to stop. I need to repent. I need to turn from my wicked ways, and I need to do right. That's what Judah needed to do. It was longer for Judah to go into captivity, but it ended up in captivity the same way that Israel ended up in captivity. Because Judah never took a lesson. Oh, we're better. It'll never happen to us. And that is sinful thinking. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dibla. So he went and did it. He did exactly what God told him to do. Which conceived and bare him a son. And this would be Hosea. Bared him. Him's the Hosea. He went out, got himself a wife that was a whore, and she's named Gomer, which means perfection. What a name for a woman in business. And she gives or bears a son to Hosea. And the Lord said unto him, this would be Hosea, call his name Jezreel. And 2 Kings 10, 1 through 14 with Jehu. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel. 2 Kings 10, 1 through 14. Upon the house of Jehu. Remember, he went out and killed. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. I'm going to end the house of Israel. Now, is that's not a warning from God that's going to happen. And when we studied Judah, it had already happened. God says, I want you to go get a whore. I want you to marry her. The first child. I want you to name him. I am going to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And like Judah, they did not get right. Like the Christians today, there's all kinds of warning from 66 books in the Bible. And they just keep on going their way. And when the rapture happens, and we are called away, Judah and Israel were called away from their land, weren't they? Well, we're going to be called away from the land. We're going to be called out of, of the world. Unlike Israel and Judah, some of us are going to get crowns and rewards, but those who did not adhere, those who did not do what God told them to do, they're not going to get no reward, but a rebuke, a loss, ashes, smoke. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So the end of Israel is coming. You say, well, God will never heal them. God is so mean. He is so wicked that even if they did right, what about Nineveh and Jonah? Did they get right? So mean, nasty, pork eating, have unclean animals as pets, ill, this wicked people that I don't even want to go do what God tells me to go preach to them. And what was it? Six words, seven words, was it that Jonah preached to them? And they all got right. And the king said, he even put the animals in sackcloth. You know, it's a mockery to the Jew that the Gentiles get right. 
We are a day and age right now that Gentiles are receiving the Jewish Messiah that they rejected. And they gave Paul all kinds of hard time. When Paul came into Jerusalem, which he didn't do, oh, he brought these Gentiles in. You know, he didn't bring them in the temple, but, you know, that's what they used to get them. And she conceived again and bared a daughter. And God said unto him, Hosea, call her name Lo Rahama. I don't know how to say it. Now, lo, see that L-O? The Hebrew word is no. Okay? I'm going to give you a little Hebrew. You know Hebrew now. Lo means no. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. Now, taking lo as meaning no, what would you think that name is without running to any lexicon or any dictionary? No mercy. La Harmarai, whatever her name, Mahara, I screwed up, means no mercy. The boy means, that's it, I'm done with you. The girl, the next child, the second child, the daughter means, ain't going to be no mercy at all. Now, wouldn't you think if, if God were to come down to you and say, you know what, I'm finished with you. And not only am I finished with you, I ain't going to show you no mercy. Wouldn't that get you trembling? Wouldn't you think so? <clears throat> but, <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, I get my throat and allergies. But is the church really shaking in the boots that Jesus could come back today? You think after yesterday with all the churches that had that Super Bowl in their church house with a big screen television and all that, inviting the world and Come watch all that garbage and all that. You think they were really ashamed if Jesus came last night? They're not. And when God says, I'm going to be finished with you, and I ain't going to show you no mercy, that is a time that, you know what? You need to find out what to do to get right. When God says, I ain't going to show you mercy... <clears throat> you ain't going to get it from the world, and you ain't going to get it from Satan. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Judah has not fallen decay yet. But it will. And God will leave Judah, and he'll lack them mercy as through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. That's down the road. But God is going to take his eyes off northern Israel and put it upon Judah. Now Judah at this point should be. Ooh, look what look what Jehovah is doing to our brethren. And will save them by the Lord their God. It will not save them by bow, nor by sword nor by battle, by horse, nor by horsemen. So what? What is that? When Israel is attacked and taken captivity, Judah does not need an army. They don't need the Marine. They don't need the Navy. They don't need the Air Force. They don't need the Coast Guard. They don't need uh, missionaries. They don't need an army. God is going to protect them. When Israel goes into captivity, God's going to say, hey, that's the border between north and south. That's the border between Israel and Judah. You stop right there. You don't go any further. Now, Judah has not, now Judah is a sin, but their sins are not as bad as Israel. And I think God is using, now I'm thinking, this is me. I think God's going after Israel to get Judah right, because we know now what by studying the books of the Bible that we're up to Hosea now, we know exactly what happened to Judah. They did not follow God's lead. They went the lead of Israel, and now the temple is gone, and the city is gone where we left off in Daniel. Daniel's in Babylon. He's in a Gentile city with, with pigs being cooked and all kinds of worshiping idols and all kinds of gods and no temple. Now, 
when she had weaned Larama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, call his name Loamai. Remember, Lo meaning no. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So I'm going to come, and you're not going to be a nation no more. I am not going to show you no mercy, and you're not going to be my people. These people that will die, God's people, they're God's people. They're going to die, and they're going to burn in hell. And they're burning in hell today. And they're God's people. They're God's chosen. If you're glad you're, you're under the mercy of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved by grace, you can't go to hell today. If you are a child of God, you can't. You can't lose your soul. These are God's people in the Old Testament. He said, listen, I'm not your God no more. Jesus says in, in the Gospel of John, he says, you know, you may deny me, but I can't deny you. No one can pluck them out of my hand. Here they're being plucked. Here they're being cast off. And when religion tells you, oh, you can lose it, you're in the Old Testament. Get back in the New. You're under the, the blood of bulls, goats, and, and whatever. Get back under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ where these things are written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. You didn't have that in the Old Testament. And yet there is some mercy shown. By the time that Hosea is written, there's mercy. You know what? David committed two sins that he ought to just died and gone to hell. But the mercy of God, the sure mercies of God saved David. So, if you read the Bible, it's like, oh, man, you really don't know, but according to the law, he went to hell. There's some wording between Abraham's bosom and hell. The Samuel told him, he said, listen, tomorrow, I think it is, you'll be here with me. Abraham's bosom or across the stream. Now, this is not a contradiction. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. They're going to have children. They're going to have children, children. They're going to have children, 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 children. You know how many Jews there are today from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes? There's been a whole mess of Jews. And God said, as the sand of the sea. You know God has numbered the sand of the sea. Now, I'm not dating nothing. Never am I going to date anything. Because I don't know. But God knows how, ma how much sand is on that sea. And he says be as the sand of the sea. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a point in time that every Jewish person that is, is born... They're getting closer and closer to how much sand is in that sea that God knows. Doesn't he say as the stars are in the heavens and he knows all the stars by name? Wouldn't it be funny if, if you open up Chronicles, all those names, and those, there are the names of all the stars in the heaven? Never mind Orion and all that. Maybe they got all, maybe all those stars have got Jewish names. Then... Joseph tells his brother, and I had a dream that the sun, Jacob, the moon, my mother, and the 11 stars bow down before me. Well, there's at least 11 stars up there with, with, the, with the, uh, the names of the 11 tribes of, of Israel and 12, Joseph. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be interesting if God knew how much sand was in the sea and the numbers is getting closer and closer and closer? I don't know. Which can cannot be measured by man, nor numbered by man, but God. Jesus said he knows how many hairs are on your head. You know how many humans have been since Adam, and that God's been in the business of counting your hairs, those that have fallen off, those that have grew, grown. And everyone, and the hairs on your head, that includes the beard and the mustache, the ears, the nose, the eyebrows, eyelids. God is a record keeper. 
And you need to realize as much as those numbers in number seven in the book of Numbers and Chronicles and how great of a list that God keeps track in Matthew 1 and Luke chapter 3, you realize that God is keeping the same records of date and time of things that you do that is right and the things that you do is wrong. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. He's writing a book with your name on it just as much as Hosea has got his name in it. He measured or numbered, it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Romans 9, 25 and 26. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Now, that's a contradiction. Wait, you just said. No, there's coming a future when the Jews will get right with God, and then they'll be his people. Right now they're out of fellowship with God. A Jew that dies right now, I mean in the church age, between the time that, that Jesus went back to heaven, sat at the right hand of the Father, until the rapture of the church, any Jew that dies without the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, any child of God that is a Jew that dies without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, dies and goes to hell. Though they're God's people. When, when that Jew rejects Jesus Christ and dies, God says, I ain't good, God. Now, if a Jew does receive Jesus Christ as his Savior, who then becomes that Jew's God? To rebuke the Jehovah Witnesses. Jesus Christ becomes their God. And their salvation. And it becomes... Jehoshaphat, or Joshua, or Jesus, which means Jehovah saves. You put the J-A or J-E in Hosea, you've got Jesus Christ, their God. Right now, God says, I am not your God, it's just Hosea. You see why I've taught you this part? See, there's certain Hebrew and Greek that you need to know. This is very important. you got to know the Hebrew here, because it's very important. God says, I am not your God. So this book, he took off the J-A or the J-E. Go ahead, try to save yourself. You ain't going to do it. Ye are the sons of the living God. Those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ become the children of God by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. And then when the, when the desolation shows up from Daniel... And they start fleeing, and they start seeking God, and the Lord Jesus Christ gets on his horse and comes back and gets them. Those that are alive and those that are in the millennium, then they become the sons of God again. Man, when they said that his blood be upon us, we'll have no king but Caesar, they said a mouthful. Just as much as they told Moses when God said, you know, you want the law? Yeah, we'll do everything you, you tell us to do. Really? Have you read, have you ever broken down what the law says for them to do and not to do? I think it's like 107, I got something like that uh, in my webpage of all the different things broken down, a few extra added in there. There's a lot of laws for them to obey and keep, and they never did. That's why Israel goes into captivity. That's why Judah goes into captivity. They didn't keep the law. We can't keep the law. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Are they together today? No. They don't even know who they are. Eleven and ten are a prophecy of Israel and Judah now separated will become one unity nation. How do you like that? God has said, listen, Israel, you're going to be no more. That's it. I'm done with you. Absolutely no mercy. I ain't your God. And then he drops the last verse and say, not only am I going to be your God, not only are you going to be my son, but there's going to be no more north and south Israel. You're going to be one children. Be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. David, Ezekiel 34, 23, 24. 37, 25. 
Now we get back to the prophecy we've been reading about in Ezekiel and Jeremiah. We read about David. Under God, Jehovah saves, J-E-S-U-S, -S, or Joshua, Jehovah saves, David being under him, their prince, the king of kings. Nation of Israel will be united, unite, whatever. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. That land is going to be their land. From shining sea to flowing river of Jordan. From Dan all the way down to the, the, I forget the, the southern border is. But not only will that land going to be theirs again one day, which is theirs all eternity, but they're going to be dwelling there as one nation. Under God, Jesus Christ, with David as their king, unified and blessed. But right now, God says your spiritual condition is you're a whore. You're not going to be any longer. You're not going to have my mercy. I'm going to deny you. And many, many years later, there's going to be hope. There's going to be a nation. And they'll have David as their prince. You can never say God is finished totally with Israel. He is not. If you say that, you have defiled the scriptures. 